thing you know that that can cause split ends and like usually you want to go in with actual hair cutting scissors I'm sure you've done your research though I'm sure yeah watch a YouTube video on how to cut bangs at least oh my gosh okay um how much time do you have? Yeah, it's late, I know. Like, what time is it even? I don't know why I check my wrist like I own a watch. It's 1.13. It, like, I don't know, 30 minutes to, like, look up some stuff together. Or you really just want to do it, like, quick and dirty and possibly regret your decisions in the morning. I didn't walk in the room when I did. <laughs> 
so <laughs> this is the bestie gets bangs presentation things to consider before you get scissor happy and obviously I have an aesthetic preference <laughs> my pretty pink heart nails and pretty pink and heart filled presentation it's kind of white decay okay on the agenda for this evening we are going to cover your hair texture face shape, the types of bangs that you can choose from, and some extra details just to consider before cutting your hair. And things like hair texture and face shape will just give us a little bit of a guide. There's so many options out there and it can get a little overwhelming. So knowing how to work with your hair type and your face shape in ways that might be more flattering um, could be useful. So, yeah, let's just take a look, take a look. And we have Ice Spice to help us on our journey. Um, no, I'm just kidding. She's just hanging out there. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not really sure what you're seeing, so... Um, basically... Okay, your hair can be straight, wavy, curly, or coily. It could even have a combination of some of these textures. Um, consider how you're going to wear the bangs, okay? So, maybe you like to wear your hair straight most of the times. Theoretically, I don't know. No, you like to do it more curly. Okay, cool. So, you're gonna want to cut your hair based on how you want to style it. So, if you were styling it straight, we would cut them straight. But if you're gonna style them curly, we're gonna cut them curly. Okay? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, baby stuff, baby stuff.
Okay. Next, what is your face shape? Okay. <sighs> this is also one of those things that's like so uh, confusing because you are not going to fit into a perfect mold of like this is the face shape and it looks exactly like that. No. I mean, you could, but usually that's not the case. You could have like a mix of uh, different face shapes or, you know, it's all a spectrum. Okay. Um, also important to note that every face shape is stupendous is the word that came to mind is beautiful and you don't have to hide anything about your face shape. Um, honestly, a lot of the research that I did on face shapes, it seems like it focuses a on women and, um, yeah, a lot of like focus on making the face more oval and softer, you know, um, because apparently the oval shape is like the prettiest because it's most balanced, but that's kind of boring too. If you have an oval shape, you're gorgeous, but it's just to say we don't all have to look the same. And that would be really boring and, yeah, boring if we all look the same. Um, but what a haircut can do, what bangs can do, is alter your face shape a little bit. It can bring attention to certain features, um, or it could hide certain features if you want to hide them or whatever. And, uh, yeah, a lot of the advice out there is just trying to give your face more balance and have it look a little more oval. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, but hopefully I can explain it well enough that you can use it in a way that suits you and your taste and your sense of style and your personality. If you don't mind, I'm going to actually measure your face. Um, you want to get the width of your forehead, the width of your cheekbones, and the width of your jaw line, as well as the length of your face. And this will just give us a more general idea of what face shape you're working with. So. First, to put your hair back and out of your face, which it is good. Don't find your ears. You can even put a headband on if you like, but I'm just gonna go with that for now. Um, let's see, I know I have it right here. I've got this neat little.
exaggerate the width of your face and you also could benefit from soft face framing layers and long bangs Just forgot to put everyone else's name. That's fine. 
shaped bases. So this isn't often included um, sometimes, but basically the horizontal line is widest at the bottom and uh, there's more length than width and a more narrow kind of air line here. You want to put volume at the top to create some balance. So think shorter swept back bangs to widen the top of your face. Um, shaggy hairstyles, deep side parts, soft layers with a side swept bang. Any fringe will look good. Um, chin length haircuts aren't ideal as they will create more bulk around your chin. Unless, of course, you want to emphasize that, then own it. Do it. We love a strong, powerful jaw. Okay, and now, the best face shape, because it's mine, is the heart or inverted triangle. And I share this lovely face with Stephanie Shu, who I know from Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Sydney Sweeney, who's popular from Euphoria. So, we have whiter, prominent foreheads, usually a narrow or pointed chin. I feel like my chin is not as pointed as maybe other heart shapes because I feel I have like a little more softness here, a little more cushion to create it, makes it a little less pointy, I don't know, but I'll let you look at the pictures. So you can also have a widow's peak. You want hairstyles that create width through the jawline, with fullness and width through the nape. what you want. Or uh, styles that narrow the forehead. More narrow, rounded bangs, um, and mid-length to long hair. Think side-swept bangs, brow-grazing fringes. Um, particularly, they look best if kept long and PC to enhance the eyes. Pixie cuts, which narrow the forehead but maintain the jaw. Long layers and wearing your hair forward around the face. Also, if you grow facial hair, that can help soften the pointy chin. Um, so yeah, got options. Next, almost done. I think this is the last one. Diamond face shape. So we grab it. So we grab it. Um, and Jennifer Lopez. So, diamond face shapes are similar to oval face shapes, but angular. As you can see, look at that. Nice carved out cheekbone. Gaunt expression. <laughs> so, the widest part of your face is your cheekbones. You have an angular jaw. And a soft fringe and length will help to soften the angles of the diamond shape. Um, think long layers, textured shags, side swept bangs, or shorter curtain bangs. Updos and top knots, like J-Lo. Um, will showcase the gorgeous cheekbones and draw attention away from the jawline. You want to avoid blunt cuts that add angularity, like full fringes that widen the forehead and make the jaw look sharper. You want to, um, well, if you want to emphasize the width of your cheekbones, you want a center part. And that's the thing where I get confused because, like, I feel like they just, when I did my research, it, some things were contradictory. I would literally Google, like, does this fringe look good on XY face shape or whatever? And it would say yes, and then another article would say no. So at the end of the day, just do what you want, okay? <laughs> do what you want, but this could be helpful in case you 
want to avoid highlighting something you may not like as much about your face or you feel insecure about or whatever, or you want to create more balance. So, do you have, hopefully, a better idea of what your face shape is and what it can handle? If you're still unclear, don't worry, that's most of the population. Um, but we have some bangs that we can go over. Um, I think something that honestly looks great on a lot of face shapes are long side swept bangs. They're also low maintenance, um, easy to grow out, easy to style, very versatile, and great for someone new to bangs. I don't know if you've had bangs before, but it's a good beginner baby bang. But then we actually have baby baby bangs uh, over here, but we'll get to that. Um, and then we have the bang that normally you think about when you think about bangs. Zoe Deschanel, looking amazing. Um, in a front bang slash fringe. This is a real bang. It changes up your style. It makes you look different. It's got personality. Um, and then you have more of a baby bang. It is for the seasoned bang haver. It's a bit more ballsy. It's a bit more if you're ready for a big change and you want to feel drastically different. I don't know what you were going for necessarily. I think there is a version of long bangs that are crowd pleaser and generally look good on a lot of different face shapes and features. So, might I suggest if you were in any way uncertain, curtain bangs. Okay, they are, there's like so many ways of having curtain bangs. Here's a little bit more of a grown out curtain bang on the stunning Gary Washington. Um, and then also here on, uh, I forget her name at the moment, but these are also curtain bangs, a little bit more like mid length to shorter curtain bangs. These are right down here. Don't know your name, but gorgeous shorter curtain bangs. All that curtain bangs are is bangs that are shorter in the middle and taper longer on the sides. Okay. It creates a must up cool kid look. It's low maintenance. Looks great grown out, as you can see on Carrie. Um, and it works well with all hairlines and fairly easy to style. So, I also happen to know better how to cut those. So if you want to do a curtain bang and you want some help, it's good because, what is it? You can always cut more, but you can never cut less. Words to live by. Um, so yeah, does that sound? You want to maybe try that? Okay, I think you would look really cute. It would add a little bit of personality to your hairstyle. Yeah, okay. So, little tiny details. Just fun little points to be aware of. So, your hair parting, how it naturally parts is really important to what kind of bangs you want. So if you have any cowlicks, um, if you prefer to do a side part versus a middle part, um, you don't want to be fighting your natural part with your bang shape, which I could have probably done better knowing that when I decided to get, what would I consider this, more of a fringe? It could also maybe be considered uh, curtain bangs. It's not feeling like it is. It's like only minimally a little shorter in the middle and longer on the sides, but um, I'd say this is more of like a fringe, not quite a baby bang, not quite like to the brow, you know, they, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but I have definitely a natural part here, as you can see, and I do my best to like cover it. I also have a cowlick in the back, um, so that's important if you have a really strong cowlick that's pushing your hair a certain way. Um, 
summer. Do you want to have hair in your face? Maybe not. Um, you also want to think about your hair strands. So, if you have fine, normal, or coarse strands, it has to do with like each strand and thickness. Um, if you have more fine hair and you're doing like a little wispy fringe situation, wispy bangs, they can get greasier quicker and you just want to take note of that. You're probably going to have to use more dry shampoo or whatever when styling them. And then um, also if you have coarse hair and you cut it very, very short, it has more like, it's more likely to stand up particularly if it's also, um, what you would call it, high density. So low density slash thin hair. I think I land in the low density hair. Low density to middle, medium density. But you can more easily see the scalp, you know? It can, yeah, it's just something. It's not bad, not good. You can just see more scalp. So maybe you don't want to get your clippers and like have a buzz cut unless you do want to see your scalp. But yeah, it's just something to be aware of. Um, and then high density slash thick hair means there are a lot of hairs on your head and you can hardly see the scalp. So yes. You want to, if you have thin hair, avoid too many layers, apparently. Um, just because I think that gets rid of some of the volume that you may be lacking because your hair is thin. And then if you have thick hair, you do want to get layers because thick hair can get really heavy and that'll just help to ease up some of that weight, allow your hair to style better, move more, um, feel less heavy on your head, and you want to avoid going too short, like I said, because it can stick out, and too long, it'll weigh down your hair, if you have curls especially, it can create, like, it can get flat to your head, and then all this volume at the bottom, just because of how heavy the hair is, so just things to know. Just little things to know. And you did it. Wow. You made it through. To the end. Let me see if it wants to. Love you. <laughs> Remember that your hair goes back. Have fun. That's it. Yay. <laughs> I hope that was out.
sources. It's fine to have product and cut and other sources. It's don't do any product, but whatever. Um, but your hair good. Feels nice and product free. Okay. 
so that it frames your face and kind of gives you a little bit of a slimming effect. Okay. Right here. Excuse me, little piece. Right here. Okay. Okay, okay. And then last little piece here.
obviously the best thing you can do for yourself is get a professional to cut your bangs. We can't always afford it. So, next best thing is get your bestie to try to do it for you. <laughs> I think you're done. I think you're done. Let's put some oil through it. Literally just the tiniest amount. You don't even have to break the cast up if you don't want to. Longer if you leave the cast in before the next time you have to wash and style it. But <gasps> cute. <laughs> oh, I think it looks so pretty. Sweet.